Hey everyone, I'm Clive. Hey, and I'm Louis. Hello, I'm Akush. And today we are going to be talking about the ISO 19650 templates. In our industry, BIM is a bit of a challenge and lots of teams have lots of different ideas about how much BIM they should do, when they should do it, and why, the purpose. And with all of those differences of opinion, we end up sometimes with duplicate effort. Here in the example where we've got four different teams modeling the same thing, potentially at different times. And a lot of challenges, many, many challenges, ranging from not really understanding what the requirements are to sequencing work that maybe causes clashes that ends up in rework and lots of difficulties in communication. So along comes the ISO 19650 standard to really, really help our industry. We have been super excited about this and it's all about aligning expectations and providing this framework to manage information and have a unified approach it's so, so important that everyone talks about the same, same requirements in the same way. So that's what the ISO 19650 series is all about. And there's some fantastic ex explanations about the process steps and the different things that need to occur at different stages throughout the project. So there are these eight steps that are unpacked in diagrams with lots and lots of detailed requirements. And as a result of that, there are a lot of documents that might need to be created and they are created by different teams at different stages throughout the project. They range from the organizational, the project, the exchange, the asset, execution planning, responsibility matrix, and task and master information delivery plans, race C charts, and also many others. So there's lots and lots of outputs that are required as a result of these steps in the workflow. If, if you feel overwhelmed by that, uh, you're not the only one. There are many, many teams out there that are experiencing the same thing. Uh, so don't worry, you're in the right place. We're here to help as well as all of the great guidance and other documentation that's out there already. So how can we help? Let's take a look maybe at the workflow that we can unpack inside of Planoly. The first thing is that you'll notice when you start a project in Planoly, you get options to choose which of those documents you would like to start in the plan and be able to then start completing them or create your own. And then in the scope, we provide many libraries of whether it's abstract geometry or detailed elements and all of the information requirements for even that asset information model and the master information delivery plan items. And then also the third part, not only creating all of those requirements, but being able to filter them and print them so that they are dedicated appointment contracts at the end of the day. That's really a, a very quick preview of what we're going to unpack and show, but we would love to hear who we have on the call. So let me launch a poll that I'll keep open for just a little bit. I can see lots of folks coming in already. Where are you on this journey? Are you just starting to learn? Are you boosting your knowledge? You've known about the ISO standard for a bit and now you're boosting your knowledge. Or are you on the other end of the spectrum where you're implementing it on most of your projects and you're potentially a Jedi? So let me uh, end the poll in three, two, one, we can see with the results there, oh, let me share results. Uh, we can see with the results there that there are many people that are just starting to learn and, and many people that are boosting their knowledge. Actually, what do we got there? 88%, uh, so nearly 90% of people. That, so we're here to help. The two main items that we're going to be going through are the templates, what they are, uh, why they're important, and then how they're included in a workflow that makes it simple for teams to adopt the ISO standards. We'll also talk about how to get involved. And if you are one of those, end up being 15 Jedi on the call, then uh, we would love to get your involvement as well. The first one is organizational information requirements. Every company is different and organizational requirements are the owner or the appointing party's requirements when it comes to their strategy and really why they get out of bed in, in the morning. Those requirements are gonna be different between a technology company and a casino operator, a technology company might be very interested in portraying a, a very green and, um, and forward looking and leading approach. Whereas a casino operator is be focused on opening the building, maybe the client experience and path through a building, understanding that in a lot more detail. So we have some templates to help teams to unpack what their organization requirements are to get started. When it comes to the project information, then we might have to approach different projects and realization of different assets and, and facilities, then we have different circumstances. So in an example, a renovation and a new build might have to be approached differently. So that's something that recorded a project information requirement. Yep. And do we have a template for that? Oh yeah, we, we happen to have a template for that. <laughs> 
And then the asset information requirements, again, depend on the type of asset or type of building. The asset could be anything. It could be a specific object or an element inside, maybe a pump, or it could be the asset as, at large for the whole building. And when it comes to a medical office building versus a hospital, you're going to have many different assets. And being able to coordinate those information requirements and understand what those are for maintenance and for ongoing life cycle costing, for example, for that project, they're going to be very, very different. And do we have templates for that? Yes, we do. We have a list of potential assets and a never ending list of all of the elements that we might have inside of a building. So when it comes to exchange information requirements, so that's just the combination of the previously mentioned organizational asset and project information requirements. And this is really a, a contractual document when the, when the owner client or, or using the right terms, the appointing party would be sending out to the potential project participants to, to tender on that document and return their way of, of approaching the project and executing the project and realizing the project. Be, do have a template for that, of course, but in a perfect world, you might want to use your existing documents or use the, the OIR, AIR, and PIR documents that we, that we are providing to you and assemble uh, your project-specific EIR uh, in the application. Absolutely. And, and then when we start a project, there's a, a concept of testing and being able to make sure that the project is essentially ready for the project team. So we've got checklists and ability there inside of Planoly to have those requirements checked for whether the CDE is up and running and whether the workflows are good. If something, something can go wrong, it will. Um, <laughs> in the risk register, of course, we, we can be somehow prepared and, and just think through and, and, and document some of the risks that we might have to encounter and then, of course, set some uh, mitigation measures. So we, we are actually planning early, right? Okay. And we do have a template for that as well. We do have a template for that. And it helps teams to understand which are the important risks and how to mitigate them and assign them to an owner making sure that it's a complete loop, not just a checklist where somebody says, yes, we've got one. It actually has a workflow in there as well. And then when we talk about BIM execution plans, th this is one of the most talked about documents. We, yes, we, we do have a template for that, but the principle is that this is broken into two parts. One as an answer to the employer, to the owner, to the appointing party's requirements. And then as you start to work on the project, you will build and continue and improve one and this is really how the project team will be delivering. What are the processes? How are, what are the steps that teams are gonna go through? This is the rubber meet the road. TIDP, MIDP, the task and master information delivery plan. So uh, to put it in, in very wrong and very simple, this is a task list. So um, each and every task team that are assigned a certain activity or a certain task to be carried out, they would put together their, their to-do list and they would put together how they are going to uh, execute and then and, and carry out those, uh, those tasks. And that would be the task information delivery plan. But of course, the lead appointed parties, the ones who are in charge of, of bringing things together, they can assemble what is called a master information delivery plan. So that's a set of task information delivery plans combined. And that's going to be the way of, of carrying out the project in, in the end. And oh, yeah, we happen to have a, a template for that. <laughs> we have a template for that. Great. And then racy charts, racky charts, lots of people pronounce these differently. But how do you assign accountability to a team, responsibility to a team member, and then have consulted people at the right times and people that are informed about the ongoing and maybe the results of something. So it really is responsible, accountable, consulted, informed, but um, we really understand it much more as the team is accountable and being able to assign somebody specifically as a responsible person. That's really, really, really powerful to not just have a list of tasks, but make sure that they are assigned to the right teams. So inside of the RACI charts, you see all of those ISO 19650 clauses and then a grid to be able to assign who is responsible, who is accountable, who, is, who needs to be consulted and who needs to be informed. And then the responsibility matrix. So uh, that's, that's actually pretty much happened to be the, the essence of, of, of Planoly, the, the right beam at the right time by the right people for the right reasons. So really uh, who is doing what for, for what purpose in what point in time, um, so that's what we can document in Planoly. And that's what we are going to visually communicate to other project participants. The last one is the lessons learned. So yeah, our industry has this Achilles heel, this problem of, Unfortunately, every project team is created and does great things on a project, learns a lot, but then is disbanded at the end of the project. So we have lessons learned templates and workflows to capture all the way through the entire project and have it accompanying the project so that then teams can go back to similar projects before they start a next project and understand what they can maybe avoid by using those lessons learned. And it, it really is a very difficult thing for our industry because we build teams for every single project. 
Okay, so there's lots of templates. Now what? So you've got some, <laughs> you've got some templates. Now what? What do you do with these templates? How how do you actually how do you actually use them in a workflow? So the ISO 19650 workflow with those eight main steps there, ranging from assessment and need to closing out a project, with the swim lanes of the teams that are involved, the appointing party, the owner or the person that is paying the bill. The lead appointed party, the, the team that is responsible for coordinating everybody, and then the appointed party are different swim lanes inside of this diagram. The first part, appointing somebody to be the information manager. So that function needs to be appointed, and that is key throughout the workflow that we know who is responsible for that, um, especially within the appointing party. And then hopefully the appointing party has a group of documents that then corresponds to an invitation to tender. So this is the bidding process. And those documents combine into the exchange information requirements that we then get responses from, from the prospective lead appointed party. Multiple responses with multiple pre-appointment BIM execution plans with potential risks and mobilization plans that form a response, a tender response, with input from the potential task teams that that lead appointed party has. And then the next part is when you make an appointment. So you're actually saying, I am contracting for this team to actually carry out the project. And we would start to add the responsibility matrix and the master information delivery plan, which is a combination of all of the teams that are doing the work, their task information delivery plans. All of these terminologies, I'm sure, are potentially very foreign to those that are just starting. This will be something that will be reinforced as you use the workflow and use the templates. And then the last parts to this workflow are obviously delivering the project, mobilizing, verifying that you're meeting as you go through each stage in the project, the requirements, and then closing out with the lessons learned. This workflow is supported by Plannerly, and we have inside of the plan and the scope modules for this whole section through one, two, and three, the templates to support that. And I see a lot of, um, yes, there are um, editable templates that you can use and put in place and um, invite others to, and we'll take you through this workflow now. Invitation to tender, putting together the organizational, the project and the asset information requirements into an exchange information requirement. And that becomes the tender, that becomes the set of tender documentation. And Louis, once we've created that, what's important? Within the platform, you can set up teams to make sure that you can assign what teams are responsible for certain sections and invite team members with certain levels of permission so that they can see certain sections that are ready for them to review. So this is an important step in the workflow to get teams invited to the tender. And then one of the other parts of this is being able to control what people see. So being able to say which documents people have access to and being able to share only certain parts of it and following the ISO workflow of work in progress shared and published, we can control that along with settings on the document level as well and assigning sections to specific parties as well. Yeah, a huge thing about that is consolidating all that information in the same areas that you're building it. Instead of using another platform to communicate and process feedback, you're doing that in the same location. Absolutely. So after we've had a, a an invite, we then get a response and the team that's responding really needs to get involved in that and maybe collaborate and ask questions. Unfortunately, in a traditional workflow, they would have a potentially a PDF sent to them and it would take a long time to get communication backwards and forwards. So one of the really, really cool things about online collaboration now is that those teams that are invited to that tender workflow can actually ask questions inside of the app and inside of the specific requirements rather than it being abstract and disconnected and maybe either scribbled on a, on a PDF or written in a completely external system. So keeping all of that together is very important. And then when we look at the appointment workflow, we're selecting a lead appointed party and they will start to include responsibility. All of this is set up inside of the scope with the responsibility matrix, the task information and the master information delivery plans. And yeah. the importance here, yeah, teams can visually understand the milestones or the BIM uses within this module. Um, they'll be able to put the list of what items are required, whether they're elements or even documents to accomplish those specific goals, what information can, is required, 
and who's responsible. So that's one of the most important things to, to include. Also, the level of information need, being able to specify how much effort is needed in these elements or documents and what specific information. So if you need to get granular for those very specific owners or needs for those BIM uses, this is where you can do that very easily. Absolutely. The new 17412, really, really powerful way of being very much more prescriptive about what you're asking for so that you can then check it later on. And then the task list. So having task information delivery plans here, we can see the three from the architect, the, uh, the mechanical engineer and the landscape. Was that right? Landscape. All of these now summarized and understanding what they're delivering, when they're delivering it, uh, how it's going to be classified and coded in that delivery as well. It's great having all of this in one place, but what about when you want to appoint somebody? One of the really, really key parts of the workflow is not overloading people and being much more purposeful when you are asking for things. So a great way of asking in this regard is to filter specifically per appointment. The example we're seeing, we're choosing milestones, so an information delivery milestone or purpose, and also a team, potentially a task team, that is then going to deliver a specific output. So we saw in the original intro where you can create these PDFs. These PDFs form the contract, the appointment documents, and much more targeted for each of those appointments. So we've talked about what happens to get people on board, and there are so many more videos and documented workflows that we will be sharing to unpack all of this. Okay, we know what we need to deliver. Let's mobilize a team. Let's make sure that we're actually getting to do so there's no blockers in the way. Make sure that everyone understands and tracks the responsibilities and the handovers. Make sure that then we can validate and verify that we are meeting those requirements and that we are learning at the end of the day. So Louis, how do we manage the, the updates and status of work? Yeah, well, each team has a certain permission level so they can filter for their own scope of work. They can filter for their own teams, see tasks that are in, within a certain time frame, and make those progress updates themselves. Typically, a modeler or someone who's editing the model would progress those tasks and get them to a point where a checker can then verify level of information need, all connected to the model. And we do have an integration with BIM 360. It really helps ensure that we meet expectations from the original document and we provide better quality models. Yeah, linking it to the requirements inside of the same workflow is, is extremely powerful to make sure that you're not missing things along the way. Teams know exactly what the tasks are and you can understand when they're delivering uh, exactly what they're delivering and then being able to show it vi visually to be able to understand you know, what is checked, what has been procured, what is on track, what is behind. Visualizing that status is, is really important. So we looked at the workflow from assessment of need and building that tender, that exchange information requirement that then gets a response or many responses, gets selected and then gets delivered. This is an introduction and we will unpack every single one of the templates and how to use them, how to deploy them, how to get better results on your projects. Let's just have a quick summary. <laughs> <laughs> We've covered a lot. There are lots of tools that help us to BIM, to create models, to understand them and to use them. But managing those standards and managing the workflows and managing the process, uh, unfortunately, sometimes is on business management tools rather than BIM management tools or information management tools dedicated to, the, to this workflow. The unfortunate nature is that it's disconnected, usually from each other and, and mostly from the BIM workflow. So what we've done is created an integrated and more efficient workflow that's connected in a cloud-based environment and building all of those templates into it so that it makes it easier for teams as well. Lots of templates to get started. Uh, being able to create and manage all of those documents online and be able to use these collaboration tools for commenting and restricting access and providing access when it is actually the right time and being able to control what's shared and what's published for, for authorized use. Having that in a combined with a, a tool and a process in the same place, being able to filter for those appointment documents and store all of those appointment documents inside of that same project so we haven't got a bunch of different documents going everywhere being able to verify against those contractual requirements when the model or the deliverables, whether it's 2D drawings or documents are, are delivered for each of the tasks and being able to also provide input for the teams that are developing the platform and the templates and become part of that review team as well. These are all some of the benefits that we would love to share with you. Louis, do you want to summarize how everyone can get involved? 
Yeah, absolutely. So you can join free and try out the templates. All the templates are going to be available for you as soon as you sign up. Um, one thing we didn't mention is there are many languages for the interface, but the next step is to join the review team on the current English templates. And then another step would be to help us translate some of those into other languages for your region. Bookmark for deeper dive on the articles that we'll be sharing in the next couple of weeks. And it'll be a deeper dive on each of these templates and how to use them within the, the platform. And we are also offering a free company plan trial with your branding to those who request that before the end of 2020. A couple options there for you guys to get started. And what we really want the most is your feedback. It's the only way we can improve templates, improve the platform for you guys and make sure that you guys are successful on your next project. So get involved, please. <laughs> Absolutely. The only way we learn and grow is through users and companies that we partner with and the partners in our Smart Lean BIM partner channel as well. It's a privilege to be able to share the, the BIM space with you guys. And uh, we wouldn't be here without you. wouldn't be able to get to this, this state of having templates and trying to help our industry. So thank you. And uh, we're really, really pleased that there's a lot more to come as well. Very, very excited. If you need some resources to get started, there's the basics course. And then if you're looking for a company to really get rocking and rolling, we have a masterclass, which is four sessions that your team can enroll in. It's free with any company plan as well. So that's something to get started. Akos, you've been answering them. Yeah. Do we have so, it that we should talk about now? Any highlights from the questions? I think some of the highlights, yeah. So um, I was trying to answer uh, together with Louis some of these, but of course there are lots of questions. Some that was trending is uh, how can you get access to the templates? Are we going to share these uh, templates? And of course we are going to. So if you go to, to planet.com, you can create your free account and you already have access to the templates. So you can start using them right away. One's a question here is what, what is the BIM 360 integration? So that's one where, you know, you can upload your model instead of uploading your model, you're connecting to a model um, and you're linking those elements and tasks. So it just helps you streamline that, that QA process towards the end there. Before this question goes for, through the, uh, the, the list, I, I see um, Oscar says, free account created, exclamation mark, clicked boxes, exclamation mark, plan in place, two and a <laughs> half seconds. Wow. <laughs> But actually, one, two, three, or five, five sentences all ending with an exclamation mark. I'll, I'll take that as a, as a good thing. It sounds really yeah. good. Yeah, baby. <laughs> <laughs> I love the comments. <laughs> um, very, very cool. And uh, we can, I mean, we can hang out forever, but we don't want to, to take you guys' time. So I know that there are a bunch of questions that we have captured in the chat and in the Q&A. We promise we will get back to all of those. If you have any burning questions, last questions, then... Uh, just throw them in the chat or throw them in the Q&A and we will make sure that we hang out and, um, and, and answer them. So, yeah, it's just, it, it, I, feel, I feel overwhelmed myself <laughs> from, the, from the, uh, the interest, which is great. Thank you so there's much. A, for there's another Ooh, request. Fun. Okay. So, yeah, please bookmark the, the page with all of the links on that will go to all of the other documents and explanations. So we'll have for every single one of the templates, an unpacking of what's in there and understanding how to use it, how to deploy it on your project. The feedback loop is continuously open. So if you would like to join the review team, then please just hit on that link. I think it's uh, planally.com forward slash reviewer. Uh, excited to hear your feedback. You can comment into the sections and that will be continuously evolving. So every time you come in, you'll see new updates to those templates. Thank you so much, everyone. Uh, take care and we will be online. We'll catch you online. Bye for now. All right. See you.